It's been a while since Clarence has been to the Boys and Girls Club of Milwaukee. As a matter of fact, it's been almost three months now that he stops and thinks about it. Not since before he was in the hospital last time. He had heart failure and complications with his diabetes. He'd been feeling okay up until then. Okay for a 76-year-old, anyway. Coming home, after a week in bed at Aurora, he found everything to be difficult. His balance was often shaky, so he'd have to concentrate just to get around the house. He barely had the strength to take out the garbage sometimes. And as a result, he didn't get out of the house very often, much less make it down to the club to meet with the kids. When his daughter would ask him how he was doing, he'd sugarcoat or change the subject. I'm fine, Rose. Will Nikki be singing her solo in church this week? The last thing he wanted to do was to become a burden to Rose. She had her hands full already. He tried not to think about it much, but when he did, the future was looking kind of bleak for Clarence around the time he met Eldertree. Clarence was doubtful when he was first introduced to Eldertree. He was hesitant and maybe even a bit scared. He didn't know how to talk to it. Didn't really understand what it was supposed to do. He'd heard about it from his nurse at the hospital, but now, having a close look in his living room, he wasn't so sure. I'll give it a week, he thought. Clarence was about ready to throw his slipper at the local news when Eldertree came rustling in, shaking his glucose meter. Oh yeah. Clarence had become so worked up over this latest round of budget cuts that he forgot to check his levels today. When Eldertree saw the reading was low, it brought Clarence a glass of apple juice from the fridge. An hour later, Eldertree was back in the room again. Clarence eyed it with uncertainty. What now? Elder Tree pulled Clarence to his feet and propped him on one leg, like his nurse had shown him to do. One leg up, then the other, ten times. This was supposed to improve his balance. Clarence was heading towards the front door to go out and get the mail when Elder Tree snuck up and held out his cane. I know, I know, I was going to take it with me, he said, and snatched it up. As he turned to continue out the front door, Elder Tree held out something else, something small and metal. Clarence couldn't make out what it was until Elder Tree attached it to the end of his cane and then slinked away. Then Clarence remembered. When he was leaving the hospital, his nurse had mentioned something like this, an ice tip. Out the front door, he could see that the walkway was looking slushy. I suppose that tree knows a thing or two, he thought, and stepped out. Early in the morning, Clarence twisted off the hot shower and turned around. He couldn't hold back a slightly embarrassed smile when he saw Elder Tree in the corner, holding out a towel for him. He grabbed it, and when a branch was held out for him to steady himself as he stepped out, he said, Easy, E.T. You know, I'm only okay with this because you've got no eyes. Rose was in her kitchen. She was cutting up carrots for soup when Elder Tree tapped her gently on the shoulder. She was starting to get used to it being around now and again, but she was still a little bit alarmed. Elder Tree calmly handed Rose the phone, and Rose knew that her dad had probably been having some trouble with his blood sugar again. She called him, made sure he was all right, and spoke with him about his next doctor appointment. Rose always keeps a strong face on around her family, but sometimes she feels like she can barely hold it all together. She would always be there for her dad. Of course she would. But it wears her out, and sometimes she didn't know what to do or how to help. And her dad would always just say that he was all right, even though she could tell that he wasn't, and so on. Later that night, after Nikki went to bed, Elder Tree came to Rose and led her out of her room took her to a place where there were others who understood the challenges she faced. There she made friends and was able to laugh a little bit. She hadn't even realized how strange she was feeling until she felt the stories of others resonate. Stories about their parents, their spouses, stories about how helpless it can feel to try to help. With that familiarity, with that sharing, came a kind of relief. She slept soundly when she returned to her room.
When Clarence shuffled into the kitchen for his lunch, he was delighted to see that the floors had been swept up, the countertops were gleaming. In the corner, Eldertree was finishing tying up the trash and recycling bags. His first impulse was to go grab the bags himself, but really, he was deeply relieved that the work was getting done. Clarence hummed as he pulled Rose's frozen chicken soup out of the freezer while Eldertree rustled out with the bags. Clarence was becoming quite fond of Elder Tree, even if the whole thing remained kind of new and odd to him. Still, he was lonely. He missed seeing people like he did when it was no problem getting around. He missed the heated discussions about local politics. He missed talking to the kids at the Boys and Girls Club. By this time, he had come to trust Elder Tree, so he wasn't afraid when it reached out and led him to a place away from the loneliness of the empty rooms of his home. This was a place where all kinds of interesting and friendly people gathered. There he got to talk about politics. He got to share pictures of his grandkids. He found people who understood him, people who appreciated the ideas that had been so long sequestered in his head. He would soon find that this gathering place was a place that he would return to again and again, relishing in the excitement that is unique to the discovery of new friends. Clarence is thinking about how much things have changed in the last three months when he hears a car horn outside. Elder Tree had arranged a ride for him to get to the Boys and Girls Club MVP ceremony. Matter of fact, he'd been able to get a ride to church for the last ten weeks with Earl and his wife. And they had found out that they'd had a lot in common. Earl had agreed to come check out the ceremony with Clarence. Clarence doesn't want to say it, but he's secretly thrilled to have his new friend see him receive his award for ten years of work with at-risk teens at the club. When he was young, Clarence largely had to fend for himself and as a result had some run-ins with trouble. He found that when he shared his stories, he was able to get through to some kids in ways others could not. It was this work that made him feel like he mattered. As he makes his way down the stoop towards Earl's car, he takes note that he's stepping lighter than he has since the hospital stay. He's excited because he finally feels well enough to start working with the kids again and he's going to break the news to the program director after he receives his award. Maybe he can get Earl to sign up, too. We'll see. Elder Tree shuts the car door and waves after them as the two new friends drive off to the award ceremony. <laughs> 